Sir who's hosting the stream. Anyway, congrats. You've now knocked Cloud9 out of two tournaments in one day. Um, it's a bit rude. Yeah, we're just taking the inspiration from our Counter-Strike team who <laughs> miraculously managed to win a match. No flame. <laughs> well they, played, they, then. They, 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 uh, we figured if Complexity CS can beat Complex or C9 CS, then for fuck's sake, like, what are we doing with our lives? <laughs> Makes um, sense. Yeah, I don't know. Sorry, I'm... Yeah, I don't know. It was a good game. It was fun. Cloud9 yeah. are still they're really good opponents. They're, in my opinion... I don't know who's, like, second best in NA. I, I thought originally it would be Aoi's team. He was really confident. But now I have no idea. I think that we're seeing a lot of teams beating other teams that maybe are acting strong. I think both Cloud9 and Unknown had a really good run uh, before the majors and the majors qualifier and then other things following up to that. And then both Unknown and Cloud9 having a rough time now. Do you think that's just teams figure them out because they were performing so dominantly? Or as the patch goes later, people adapt? Oh, that's a good question. I, I think right now the, the meta is still very... It, I honestly don't know what it is. I still don't. I think a lot of these games where Twitch chat will all just start flaming a player, most of the time come down to a couple of poor fights and or just drafting and strategy. I, I really think that drafting as a whole plays a massive role in who's winning these games. And, and no one's really figured out the patch yet. I think the major will probably change that, but it's not, there's no formula. I mean, there are heroes that in some regions will be first picked totally ignored. And it's just, who knows? Yep. Do you guys ever, as well, I noticed today in a lot of your games, you pick kind of an early game lineup. In that second game especially, you had a lineup that it seemed it needed to come online pretty early or else it wouldn't have been so successful. Do you guys prefer the early game or do you have some late game stuff you're sneaking away, hiding? Um, I don't know. It's just sort of how it's always like been my style. I never really, I, I truthfully don't know how to, how the game works if I'm drafting to lose the early game. Um, I'm always been somebody to emphasize just tower pressure and resource control, objective control. And that's how most of our drafts are formulated. So I, I don't know. I don't really, when you, when we're drafting, we don't really think of it as like early game versus late game. So it's not really something you think about. Okay. And the other thing we wanted to ask, we noticed that that second game and the third game, you had very few stuns. I think in that last game that, yeah, you pretty much had one. Um, your lockdown was a bit light on the ground. You had lots of slows. Is that ever something you worry about? Just with, I think there was a famous Cloud9 game where they dropped no stuns and their enemies just TP'd away from them constantly. The old oh, sorry, Cloud9, this is way back. Wait, sorry, could you say that again? You had very few stuns in your drops, second game and third game. Oh, I, I totally... Well, third game... They picked Warlock, and I've played that hero a lot, and I've lost a lot of scrims with that hero. So you don't really need stuns against it because if a Warlock team is dodging you, like they just can't. You can't. Like the hero, the hero just walks around and then wins you a team fight. So you just kind of have to prevent that from happening to win the game. And then game two, I 100% blame Vlad because he was just like Abaddon, Abaddon, and I'm like, all right, are you sure? He's like, yes, and he has like. 7,900 MMR, which is like 1,500 more than me. So I figured, you know, if he, if he wants this, then we got to just give it to him. But it, it didn't work out. So just play yeah. it Okay, that makes sense. He did have a number of times where I feel like the Aphotic Shield ruined some of the combos C9 were trying to set up. But overall, it didn't seem to maybe have the impact you wanted. Um, and also Doom, each game, kind of, kind of winning the games. Is that something you will prioritize if you can't get the first pick out of the ban, first ban phase? Are you just going to start banning it? Because it seemed to be very powerful all three games. Oh, the Doom? Yeah. I, I honestly, I have no idea. But sometimes I think that hero sucks, and then I played it, and somehow we won both games. That was pretty interesting because I think that's the first time I've ever played that hero ever in competitive play. So that was pretty cool. But I, I don't know. I mean, the hero deletes an enemy from the game in a team fight. So if you manage to time it, to where like that you get it on a hero that matters and it's before the fight starts like you pretty much win the fight it's just kind of dumb you blink in you have auras going and then this guy just can't use any abilities i i don't know i i 
it's one of those heroes that'd be totally cool if Ice Frog just nerfed the shit out of it, like it was previous patch, and it's just never in the game because it seems pretty impossible to balance properly. Um, I don't know. That's my final answer. <laughs> okay, and the last thing I wanted to ask, in that game, there was a team fight where you guys were trying to siege high ground where you got wall vacuumed. You got vacuumed, walled, Fatal Bonds up, like three of your players just blew up. You did manage to get off both Dooms with the Refresher, but it seemed like maybe Cloud9 had a chance at getting back in. When that type of thing happens, do you guys just say, let's calm down, let's think about things like getting the Roshan up, maybe picking up another item on someone else? Or do you get really worried? Is it just kind of like, uh, nope, another day at work? Did we get the racks in that? In no, or was this a different no you, you'd already gotten the racks, and then uh, you tried to go for the ranged racks, and everybody died. Yeah. That was a mistake, but I think we only lost the drow, if I'm not mistaken, and that's just, like, Zizzy's no problem. Like, if he's used to being ditched at this point, um, he's, like, the youngest of, like, 12 kids, so it's a common thing. They forget him at many restaurants, I think, in his childhood. Um, but wasn't really a huge deal because we already had two racks, so we knew that they couldn't really fight us when they're that far behind, so we just had to kind of farm the map and get Roche and win. We really didn't want to throw played really passive but when they have warlock darkseer and you're pretty sure there's going to be a rapier on gyrocopter really soon then it's it's tough and i actually i lied this this is the final question i want to think about the so when the rapier came out did you know it existed or because there was definitely a point in mid where vlad suddenly started pinging out uh so the rapier was formed on the gyro he hit it back in the fountain but he'd already yeah. shown the demon edge and then vlad started yeah, yeah. pinging the gyro <laughs> exactly. like mad no, um, we saw that uh, I knew that he had a demon edge. Vlad saw the rapier. I didn't see it. And then we see him farming top and mysteriously an item has disappeared. And we're like, we're pretty sure he had a demon edge. Like we knew he had it. I mean, the, there wasn't a situation we were going to let them win the game with it. I don't think unless we like five man into a choke point and got back wall comboed. But like at that stage of the game, I think Venge really helped us as well. Strangely enough, we were going to pick shadow demon. I think they, there was, pretty insightful by Theban because I'm fairly certain he knew we were, but Venge seemed to work out pretty well, especially because you just uh, take the golems of the Warlock to negative armor, so they take like more than period damage from when Drow with like three shots them, so that was pretty cool, but um, yeah, I don't know. We just tried to win Dota. Got pretty hype at the end. Well, you fun. did. You did really well. You're going to the loses bracket final, I think, against DC. I wish you luck on that. How are you guys feeling up against DC? Uh, it's always really tough, you know, to know that you're going to go up against the second best team in NA. Um, but you really, all you can do is try your best and just try to enjoy and just win the game. That's really, that's our game plan. Um, yeah. luckily, um, my main thing is like, there's, I just, I'm really concerned that if Sumail plays on Yawar's account, we'll be in some serious trouble. And I don't know how to prevent that. I asked Yawar really nicely to please play the game himself. And he just sent me a bunch of emojis. So I don't know if that's like him just like dodging or something, but I really hope it's Yawar playing against us. Okay. Yawar, Yawar is really bad, let me tell you. Is that actually a concern you guys have? Do they even live together anymore? Yeah, they do. Oh, okay. Well, I guess that's, always, that's a concern I had completely never worried about in my... My daughter history. Not, not, not something I'd worried about too much, but yeah, I wish you guys luck against them. Thank you again for joining us for an interview. Do you have any final shout outs? Uh, well, shout out to my brother. I actually just let him play on my account those past few games. So he was just playing Venge and Doom. He's just luckily talented enough to carry me to, to everything, really. Carried me my whole damn career. Um, but shout out to the fans and my dad and mom and brothers who are all still watching. And thanks again for casting. Hopefully we do good tomorrow as well. Yeah, good luck tomorrow. We'll be signing off with that. Once again, it's been at Lyrical Dota and Llama Down Under hosting, and we will see you tomorrow, or Lyrical will be seeing you tomorrow for the uh, the lower bracket finals, and then I believe the winners is, is at some point soon. So with that, we're out, and thank you again for the interview. No problem. Thanks a lot.